biblical truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. You can go ahead and be seated. And when you're comfortably seated, please speak into the microphone and uh, state your full name and spell your last name for the record. My name is Anne Marie Fisher, F I S C H E R. Good morning, Ms. Fisher. Thank you Good for morning. being here. Um, can you tell us where you're currently employed, please? Currently? Yes, ma'am. At St. Thomas More Academy in Boynton Beach, Florida. Okay, and what do you do there? I'm the director of the school. Okay, and is that for a particular uh, age group or is it a that K through 12? school has two years through five years. They leave us to go to kindergarten. Okay, so early education. Yep. Early childhood. Okay. And how long have you worked there? It will be five years in October. Okay. And before then, where did you work? At Children's Carousel in Weston, Florida. Okay. And what was your role at that school? I was director of that school as well. Okay. And before that school? Young Minds Learning Center. Okay. Now, I understand that that was a long time ago, but do you have any idea when you worked there? They... They, they, I was born on with the new ownership, and I know they had some delays, but it was in 1999. Okay. And what was your role at Young Minds Learning Center? Director. Okay. And tell me a little bit about your education, your formal education. I have an associate degree in early education from Johnny Logan College in Southern Illinois. And do you hold any certification to the state of Florida? I have um, my director's credential and my VPK director's credential and the early education credential. Okay. And I know that primarily you have an administrative role right now, but did you ever in fact teach? I taught prior to Young Minds at the school that was prior to Young Minds. I worked there from 1985 until I went to Young Minds, and I was first teacher, and then I was um, assistant director in the owner's absence. Okay. So you've been involved in early childhood education since about 1985? Yep. I graduated from in college from 1985. Okay. And I'll, um, I understand that you have a, an academic degree, but during the last 27 so years, have you done additional training in early childhood? To meet with the um, county or the state standards, I've had to do increase like VPK credentials and other courses that they require directors okay. and, and owners you, to have. And have you continued to do that over the last 27 years? Yeah. In some capacity? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and over the course of approximately 27 years, how many children do you think you've either taught or you've been the director of the school in which they attended? Hundreds, okay. probably near a thousand. Okay. <clears throat> so I'd like to draw your attention to the time that you were at Young Minds Learning Center, and you believe that was around 1999? Mm-hmm. Yes? Yeah, the owner of Young Minds was a parent at my previous school <clears throat> and asked me if I would be her director at her school. Do you know approximately how long you were at Young Minds? About a little over five years. Okay, and that entire time as a director? Yes. Okay. And what type of school is Young Minds Learning Center? Young Minds was or, or was a preschool. We started with um, <clears throat> six week olds, and the we had children left us to go to kindergarten, and we had an after school program there. Okay. And was this a private preschool or family one? owned? Okay. And it was uh, regulated through the state of Florida? Yes. Okay. Had all these <clears throat> proper certifications that you would need to? Mm hmm Yes? Yes. Okay. And did you follow um, any type of educational curriculum? We followed, um, it was a developmental age appropriate and high scope. High scope? Mm-hmm. Yes? I so see. I keep repeating yes or no to you, and I'm just doing that because Ms. Bailey She's recording everything that we're saying. Okay. And she needs, she can't record it. Here. Not, so I don't mean to interrupt you. Um, and do you remember how the classes were structured back 
in the late 1990s. As far as the school yes. or per children? Yes, the school had one, two, three, four, six classrooms. And how were they designated? It was six years to one years old. Six months? Six weeks, sorry. Six weeks to one year old. Then one to two, two to three, three to four, and um, four to five. And did the number of students to teacher ratio change depending on the age group? <clears throat> the infant room had eight children with two teachers. The one-year-old room had 18 children with three teachers. The two-year-old room had 21 children, I believe, with three teachers. And um, the three to four had 20 children with two teachers and so did pre-K. Okay. So um, I'd like to draw your attention to a family called the Cruz family. And the parents were Linda and Roger Cruz. Do you remember Linda and Roger Cruz? Yes, I do. Do you remember their children, Zachary and, and Nicholas Cruz? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Your Honor, um, may I approach the witness? Sure. Ms. Fisher, I'm going to show you what has previously been marked for identification by the defense as 1H, 1I, and 1J. I'm going to ask you if you recognize these photos. The first photo I'm going to show you is 1H. Do you recognize that photo? Yes. I don't want you to describe it, but how do you recognize that photo? It's a school in a classroom in Yen Mines. Okay. And do you recognize any of the children in that photo? Um, his name is... Tristan, and that is Nicholas. Do you believe that this photo accurately reflects um, that classroom and that time period at Young Minds, um, Young Minds School? I believe so. Okay. I'm going to show you one eye. Do you recognize this photograph, ma'am? <clears throat> That's Mary Van Hamel. She was the owner with her husband of Young Minds Learning Center. Okay, and do you recognize the child in that photograph? Nicholas. And does that photograph accurately uh, reflect that time period in which the photograph would have been taken and the people that are in it? Yes. Now I'm going to show you photograph 1J. Do you recognize this photograph? Yes, I do. And how do you recognize that photograph? The Cruz family. Okay. And does the, the individuals that are in that photograph accurately reflect the individuals that you remember from that time period? Yep, yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Nicholas and Zachary. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, the defense would move in 1J, 1I, and 1H. Is there any objection from the state? No, Your Honor. Okay, states 1H without objection will be received as, excuse me, defense 1H will be received without objection as defense 9, defense 1I will be received without objection as defense 10, and defense 1J will be received without objection as defense 11. So while the clerk marks those, I'm just going to ask you a couple more questions. If you could just let me know when they're available. Do you remember Nicholas Cruz as a student at Young Minds Learning Center? Yes, I do. Okay. And as your role as the director of that particular school, what would your responsibilities have been for not only Nicholas, but all the other students? In general, it's to provide them a safe and learning environment, make sure they, you know, their paperwork meets the criteria of Department of Children and Family Services to observe the classrooms and the teachers to, um, make sure they're providing an age-appropriate classroom learning environment. Okay, and were you also responsible, excuse me, for making referrals if you observed any developmental issues or behavioral issues? Yes, I did, with a program called Fiddlers, and the same thing as Early Steps and Child Find. If I saw a child that had some kind of delays in any way without being the professional of that regard to be able to diagnose them or be able to provide them help, I would send them for assessments. Okay. So let me show you some of these pictures um, that I had you identify earlier. This is Defense Exhibit 9. Okay. 
can you tell us who's, can you see it on your screen? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you, um, I don't want you, if you recognize any of the other children, I would ask that you don't give us their last name, but do you recognize anybody in that picture that's in this courtroom? Besides Nicholas? Yeah, no, just Nicholas. Yeah. Okay. And yes. which, which one's Nicholas? Nicholas is in the red chair sitting with what looks like overalls on with his back to the wall. Um, can Mr. Ian, could you please show Ms. Fisher how she can mark that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've now drawn a blue circle around the child that you've identified as Nicholas Cruz. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Do you remember this class setting? Yes, I did. Do you remember what age group this was? This, I believe, was the one to two-year-old room. Like right over by the blue would be the door, and that's the wall as you go in. Okay. So all of these other children would have been around the same age as Nicholas? Yes. Okay, I'm now going to show you what has been marked as Exhibit 10. Do you recognize this photograph? Yes. Okay, who is in this photograph? Nicholas Cruz and the owner of Young Minds, Mary Van Hamel. Okay, and do you know approximately how old Nicholas was in this photograph? I would say in the same age range, approaching near two. I'm not positive. Okay, that's fine. And the director of the program, was she also there a lot um, on the campus? Was she on? No, she worked about three days a week. So you would kind of run the place, and if there were any issues, you would go to her? Mm hmm Yes? Yes. I did the operations of the school, and she did more of the financing. Okay. Um, and I'm now going to show you what's been marked as 11, defense 11. Do you recognize the individuals in this photograph? Yes, I do. Okay, can you please tell us um, who's in this photograph? Nicholas Cruz is closer to Linda and Zachary Cruz is beside him. Okay. And who are the individuals that are behind? Their Zachary? parents. And do you remember their names? Linda and Roger. Okay, did you ever meet Roger Cruz? I met Roger, but just a very few times. Okay. I would say maybe five at the okay. most. Do you have any specific recollections about him during the times that you met him? No, he just every so often he he would pick up with Linda. I think once he might have come by himself. And um, you obviously recognize Linda. Linda, I I um, interacted with more. Okay, was she the primary parent to pick the pick yes. Nicholas up? Okay. And can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury your recollections of Ms. Linda Cruz? Linda Cruz? Um, when Linda came to enroll Nicholas, I was questioning, you know, the exact, for sure, relationship. But I know she wanted to put her son in a school and to provide him with an unlearning environment. And I think as a mother... She did the best she could with the means and knowledge that she had. So you have no doubt that Linda and Roger Cruz deeply loved their son, Zachary Cruz? Linda would give the kids the world that she could, and she did her best to do so. You had just mentioned that you questioned the relationship. What relationship did you question? I wasn't um, for sure at when Nicholas first started if um, he was a Adopted or not. It took Linda a while to warm up with me. Okay. Because as the more that Nicholas was there, the more I saw some signs of um, possible issues. And um, it took a few times to meet with her and discuss with her to get her accepted. And then she finally opened up to me to let me know about Nicholas being adopted and Okay. His upbringing from that. And, and we'll get to that. But um, did uh, Linda, prior to that, ever advise you that Nicholas was adopted or anything about his birth mother? 
Not in the beginning, no. And as a director of um, an educational program, is important that not only you as the director, but the educators have all the information that they can about a child. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've learned it along the way. Sure. So that, like, from that point on, when my parent, when I felt, when I compose enrollment papers, I have a lot more questions to get more of the prehistory of the child before they start. Why is the prehistory important to you, Ms. Fisher? <clears throat> Just to know their background and um, to see if it relates to any issues that we might come across okay. and to, you know, know if this their first time in a preschool, anywhere from where their first experience to if they went if their parent went full term in pregnancy. Okay. So you rely on the parents to provide you with this information? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes, okay. yes. And you want this information because it assists you and your teachers in providing the best yep. education? Yeah, be able to give us more, as much of the child's information and history as we can to be able to work with the child for them to prosper and benefit. Okay. So you had a lot of contact with Linda? Is that in some conferences with Linda? Yes. Okay. So um, did you have special needs children, what we now call ESE students? Are you familiar with that term? I am familiar with that term, but if I saw signs of children with issues, I would um, do the screening as I did with Nicholas. Okay. We wouldn't provide a per se ESE environment for them. They would get picked up in the system and get the help they need outside the preschool or sometimes like not so much when Nicholas, not that many years ago, like now they'll have um, therapists come to the school to help the children. Okay, so your school does not provide any special needs services independent of what is brought in or what you no. refer around. Okay, but you obviously have your eyes open the entire time. Yes. Okay. So I'd like to talk about that. Um, of the I think you said hundreds or thousands of students that you have taught. How is it that you specifically remember Nicholas Cruz? I don't just remember Nicholas. I remember many of the kids. Okay. And my goal as a director is to set the strongest foundation possible for my kids to grow because they're our future. And I want to be able to have them, you know, reach the sky if they can. And when I see someone like Nicholas or many of the other students that I've come across their path, so we join, we come into the same paths, um, I try to be able to get the help that he needs. And I did my, you know, my, what I would call maybe now prevention. I thought maybe Nicholas had a hearing problem. And when he was in the one-year-old room, the chairs are built in to the table. Kind of, so I would go up and kind of whisper behind him to see if I would get a response. And um, sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. So I wasn't even for sure it was hearing. But I saw um, Nicholas um, had trouble with like social interaction. Okay. And we're gonna get into that, but tell me how you would describe Nicholas as you're saying he started around the one year old until he you left before he left. Is that accurate? That's what I believe. Okay. And we all understand this is a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So we're not holding you to any particular timeline. Just do your best. How would you describe Nicholas as a, a young child? I think um Nicholas was very cared for as far as his home and connection to him. He was in a loving environment home that tried their best. As Nicholas um, developed and grew more at the school, you would see all areas, in my opinion, he was delayed in. He was delayed in independent skills. He was delayed in language. He was delayed um, gross motor, fine motor. Okay. Um, did you ever see him happy? I see him happy sometimes. Okay. Did and then a lot of times I saw him, most time, that's what I remember him, there was no real expression of emotion. Okay. Um, 
Let's talk about some of these behaviors that concern you. So you did the referral that, that we'll tell the ladies and gentlemen of jury about in a few minutes. What um, observations do you have in reference to Nicholas's behavior during the time period that you observed him? Um, Nicholas, in all different areas, Nicholas would hand feed himself because he couldn't. So let me, let me, I'd like to go in steps. So let's just talk first about his behavior, if you don't okay. mind. Okay, behavior? Yes. He was, um, he isolated himself a lot. He would go sit in the corner and just observe. He didn't know how to socially interact with others. Sometimes, um, because of his language delays, and this is pretty normal for anybody that age with language delays, it was easier to use your hands because you didn't have the words to express yourself. So in your opinion, um, based on your years yeah. in early education and your education, um, was his behavior a form of communication? For some part, and then sometimes it was, you know, I would say for the most part, the pushing and grabbing the toys, it was because he didn't know how to express himself or have the social interaction knowledge. You just said aggression. Tell us about that aggression, what it looked like. Um, if, Nicholas, if somebody else had a toy that Nicholas wanted, he would just go up and grab the toy or hit the child's hand to get the toy or the object. Um, sometimes he, um, when the teacher was trying to work with him, like trying to get him to use a spoon and not use his hand. It's one incident. I remember when he um, hit the teacher's hand away just because it wasn't some, I don't know the real reason. You know, he knows the real reason, not me. If it was, he couldn't handle it or he was confused. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, did he hit other children? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and he took things away from other children when he wanted it? Yes. Okay. Um, did he kick other students? He did not go <clears throat> up per se and kick a child. He had um, tantrums a lot where he just got overstimulated or stressed out and he would just start like hitting and kicking or if he was on the floor, he would be kicking his feet. Okay. But it wasn't purposely going up and kicking a child. It was part of the tantrum. What about biting? Do you ever see him biting? Nicholas was a late biter. What does that mean? Um, usually when you're approaching two, the biting <clears throat> stops. But he, I would say he bit at least, <coughs> and I can recall it could be way more, but for sure at least five kids. Like one child sat next to him <clears throat> in a chair and he just didn't know what to do. He didn't know how to socially involve himself or what have you. And the child had his arm out and Nicholas spit on you just said that most kids, because it's not unusual for young children to bite, right? If they don't have the language skills, yeah. And you say that usually drops off about two years old. Is that because they start finding words? Mm-hmm. Yes? Yep. Yes, yes, sorry. And Nicholas hadn't found his word yet, is that right? No, Nicholas just started near two to be able to. Um, you have centers in the classrooms? Do you know what I mean when I'm saying Yes, I do. Um, the one-year-old room wasn't confined centers, but there were areas of play. So there'd be a, like a block area maybe and then a book yeah. area. Okay. Yeah. Did Nicholas have a problem transitioning between activities? Nicholas didn't have, it depended on it. Like Nicholas had issues transitioning to lunch or to snack or outside, especially to playground time or inside to playground time. A lot of times they had to carry him to bring them in. Um, did he do better in, when it was one-on-one um, -on -one with the teacher or was he fine in a group with a lot of It was in, sometimes it was one-on-one, -on -one, but that was just to try to get to correct his behavior. But like if the teacher was working with the kids, they were like three to four kids at a table. Okay. Um, was he responsive when you spoke to him? Hardly ever. Okay. Do you think he was ignoring you? But 
No, he wasn't. He just, he just looked at you. If he looked at you, many times he didn't look at you. If he looked at you, it was just a blank look. Sometimes he just smiled like he was just confused. And a lot of times it was like no interaction at all. So you said he would grab toys and um, was physical with staff and teachers. Do you think Nicholas was a bully based on your observations? Or are kids capable of being a bully at three and four? I don't know. I don't think, I would never, I would not say, in my opinion, I would not say Nicholas was a bully. Nicholas just didn't have the social skills. Okay. So then now let's talk about some of those social skills. You mentioned, would he be able to interact with other students? He tried to, and sometimes he did. A lot of times he would back off. I'd go in the room a few times and he would be sitting on like on the same spot on the wall a lot of times and just, you know, massaging his wrist kind of thing and watching the kids. So, but if we put him in like one of the built in chairs in the table, he would do like the, the puzzle or a toy. But if he was on the carpet time, rarely did he go up and participate. Okay. with a group of kids. So you just said he would, was massaging his arms. Is that some type of a self-soothing? I'm assuming so. Okay. I, I'll say that part. I've never seen that for someone so young. But, I mean, I use self-soothing or pacifying. It's just able to calm him down in his way or comfort him. Okay. And how about his eye contact? He didn't look at you many, most of the time when you talked to him. Um, did he, pref if he did play with children, did he have a preference as to older or younger kids? Or do you remember? I don't remember, nor do I know if I can really answer that question because they were in kids of the same age. Okay. Now you had mentioned when somebody was feeding Nicholas with a, a spoon that he knocked the spoon out of the way. Or maybe a teacher was trying to get him to be able to eat with a spoon and he knocked her hand to stop. Did you observe Nicholas having difficulty with fine motor skills? Yes. Okay, can you tell us about that, please? Nicholas had a um, hard time with grasping. Like We couldn't really get him to color. And every once in a while, he would just take his wrist and kind of go across. We couldn't get him to, you know, pull the crown properly. And then we were trying to work with him on fine motor, so we were trying to get him activities. He did... I know we did um, something with little balls for him to see if he could do that. He did that, but if it, we had like these little um, clothespins and he couldn't do that. Were the other children his same age able to do those yes. fine motor skills? Mm -hmm. Now, what about gross motor skills? That's when you're using your whole body, right? Nicholas would fall a lot, especially running. If he would start off running, he would fall, or if he would stop running, he would fall. Um, he was quick to climb. He was always, his legs were always bruised because he's just pounding like against the steps and all, or he would be falling down on the steps to climb up higher to like the slide or the platform that we had. So was there a lack of coordination based yeah. on your observations? Okay. And we talked a little bit about his communication and that doesn't just include vocabulary, does it? What was that? Sorry. We talked a little bit about communication, but that doesn't just include vocabulary, does it? Or does that to you? No, I mean, there's physical communication and there's language communication. What's the last thing you said? Language, language. vocabulary, and physical. Okay, so around three years old, was. Uh, do you expect an average three-year-old to be able to communicate? Yes. What? Um, how many words should they have at that time? I think they can say a full sentence with at least four to five words. So let's take Nicholas at three when you were there. Was he able to communicate using words? I don't recall that for sure. What about sentences? Was he able to form full sentences? Nicholas, no. Like even when he was two years old, he would point to get out of um, having to communicate. And that was one of the conversations I had with Linda. Like he would point to... Um, a sippy cup 
that they had on the counter. And instead of trying to say, can I have, I want my sippy cup, or even saying sippy cup, he would just point and, you know, the teachers were working with him, would you like your sippy cup, would you like your red sippy cup? And I was trying to get Linda to do that at home too, to try to build up his vocabulary. But that in and of itself is an unusual, right? Yeah. The parents kind of step in and say, I know what he's saying, or I know what he wants, right? Yes. But at some point, children are supposed to be able to do that independently. Yes. And while you were with Nicholas, <clears throat> did you ever see him able to do that independently? Fully form a sentence, I want my sippy cup, Miss um, Handler. I'm sorry, um, Miss Fisher. I can't recall that for sure. That's fine. Um, sensory issues. Did you ever see any... I don't want to say abnormal, um, response to any sensory issues that concern you? We had, if it was something that Nicholas can use hands-on, like in that room, um, they had Play-Doh a good amount, and he was fine with that, to be able to have something like that. He had sensory issues eating, there were a lot of foods that he didn't eat. So texture wasn't a problem? Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. No? No, I mean, it depends. Like, Play-Doh he liked, but there were foods and things that even the the um, texture of inside of his mouth, he would just spit it out. Okay. Was he able to feed himself? By hand. In the one to two year old room, by hand. And then Linda started catering to it more, where she was packing him lunches that were hand fed, like little sandwiches and things that didn't require spoons and forks. Or he didn't really use a fork but spoon. How about um, issues with loud noises or flashing lights or anything like that? That a lot of times was when Nicholas if they were having free play or um, they did a this um, music thing going on or a parachute going on. He couldn't get himself to participate. He went, he actually went out and was wishing he could go out the door. He was always sitting by the door, the wall is closest to the door, and just sat there. Did he appear to be stressed to you or worried, or what behavior were you observing? I think not knowing for sure what he felt. As far as my experience, I think it was just, it was an overwhelming environment for him. And he got himself to step back to make a comfort zone for himself. Okay. Did you ever see him rocking in the classroom? He would rock. Sometimes if we talked to him in the tie chair, he would rock. And then on the wall, he would be rocking back and forth while he was soothing his arms. Not all the time, but sometimes. <coughs> so when that's either holding himself or just his hands in his lap and going back and forth? Mm -hmm. Yes? I mean, yes, yes, sorry. Okay. And that, is that another self-soothing kind of behavior, in your opinion? In my opinion. Okay. Um, his body, just based on his, the other children, did anything seem different to you? That's one of the things, and I don't mean to criticize in any way or make fun of any way, but that's one of the things that I remember most about Nicholas was his body proportions just did not seem normal to me. Tell me what that means. His head size didn't go with his body size. His ear size didn't go with his head size. Okay. That's what I remember. So um, all of the things that you just described, the other students were doing and Nicholas wasn't. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. So that's when you started to say we need to do something. Yes. 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 Okay. So when you initially brought this to Ms. Cruz, Linda Cruz's attention, tell me about that. What you told her and whether or not she was receptive. I tied uh, the first few times. She didn't. And I can understand that. As a parent, you want your child to be perfect, especially with what she did to become a parent. So a lot of times it's harder for them. And you know, as I feel a little guilty for Nicholas right now that I didn't provide him the, the best foundation, that maybe I should have done something more for him to be a better person. But I think she um, was just trying to say that he would outgrow it. And that came more from her husband because he was a parent. 
So he had more parenting experience than her. And then I finally said, you know, we're, it's getting, it's better to have early prevention and get them help now than, you know, later. And that's what I'm a big person about is early prevention for all kids. So that she finally, I said, it's nothing you did. It's a support system that will help you. And I explained to her, I could be totally wrong. You might go and have him screen and he will be fine. But let's have the professionals assess him. And that took a little while for her to get on board? A little bit. Yeah. Okay. And it was during some of those conversations that you found out additional information that hadn't been provided to you before? Yeah, that's when she shared with me that Nicholas was adopted. Okay. And what did that mean to you? How did that change your thoughts or feelings about how you should proceed? And then it... It didn't change or make any difference in my perception of him because it's just knowing more knowledge of him. He still had the concerns that I had if he was adopted or not adopted. Okay. Because my concerns for him were before even knowing he was adopted. So, I mean, I wondered about his parents in the HAR with adopting someone that young. So they were older parents? Yes. In, in all honesty, and I don't know if I should, I actually thought for a while, because they seemed much older to me, that it wasn't even quite a legal adoption. And then I was feeling bad that this child had such a rough start in life because of the, his birth mother to older parent adoption. But you say that, but you had no doubt about how much they cared and loved no. about Nicholas. They, she totally cared for her boys, totally loved the boys, and did what she could for them that she knew of. Okay, so once Miss Cruz gets on board and understands that your intentions are to help her and to help her son, yeah. what do you do? I contacted Fiddlers. <laughs> Tell us what that is, please. Fiddlers is a Florida Department, I think it stands for Florida Department Learning Resources. It's now called Early Steps and Child Find. Early, they divide it into two areas. Early Steps is under three years old and Child Find is above um, three years old, but it's an agency through the government that um, provides services for children of any kind of issues, if it's behavior or speech or gross motor, any aspect in the child's development that might have issues, they are they provide assessments and if they find that the child would benefit from um, what programs they have to offer, they provide it. So this is available for any child in Broward County, if yep. there's a referral. And yeah, Broward County, probably, I think all of Florida. Oh, okay. Um, but Your it Honor, goes by county. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I'd like to approach the witness and show them what has been identified as 1K. You may. This is a composite, Your Honor. May I approach the witness, please? You may. Ms. Pitcher, I'm going to show you some documents that I've previously provided you. Can you please take a look at them and tell me if you recognize them? By each sheet? Yes. The or top sheet, I don't recognize. Okay. This, I did not see Linda's assessment, but it is the normal parent assessment questionnaire. Okay, that's part of the Fiddler's referral? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So why don't you pull out what you do believe your responsible for? Assessment I did, I don't see. Okay. Unless I'm missing it. Oh, there it is. Sorry, I didn't miss That's it. okay. It's a lot of papers. Okay. And um, have you previously had an opportunity to review all of the documentation that you have in front of you? Yes, I did review this. 
Okay, did you review anything else? I received it, but I just didn't totally review it. I was just going by what my knowledge of him was. I'm okay, sorry, you went by what? What my knowledge of him was, what I did, not what others judging him on. So, Judge, at this time, we have it real quick. the defense would like to move into evidence SBBC 8, I'm sorry, 3 and 4, and have that marked for um, a use of the piece. You're not going to call it 1K anymore? Well, that was for identification, yes. I'm just pulling out the things she didn't recognize. So it's modified one case, two pages total, is that correct? Yes. State, do you, do you need to see these? Uh, I just want to clarify the only two that uh, pages that Ms. McNeil is putting into evidence is SBBC 03 and 04, is that yes, correct? Sir. I have no objection, Judge. Okay, the state's, uh, excuse me, the defense modified uh, for identification 1K will be received as 12, defense 12. And it is a two-page document, so we need to put a new sticker on this, please. Um, I have a sticker, but I just need, is that a part of this? No. I have it. She can give you a note. I don't think that one will peel off the back is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And then I have the certification of authenticity. For all of the school board records, Judge, and I'm just moving these two documents in particular into the state. So it's a three page document, Defense 1K for identification, is a three page document including a certification of records and the two pages that were previously placed on the record by Defense Counsel. State in that format, is there any objection to the court receiving uh, this composite three page composite exhibit as defense composite exhibit 12? No objection. Okay, it will be received as uh, defense composite exhibit 12. Can you see that, Ms. Weaver? Um, not yet. How's that? And I called you by your maiden name. Sorry, Ms. Heimler. That's right. I saw it on the document. Yeah, I see it. What is this? It is my Fiddler's assessment of Nicholas Cruz. And is this a standard um, assessment that you would do for any student you're making a referral to Fiddler's? Yes. Okay. And the purpose of, of you generating this document is what? To get um, Nicholas screened to see if there are any developmental issues for him and if so, to get him the help that he needs. Okay. And so the areas, um, these are segregated in um, designated domains of development? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you would have checked off the areas under these individual domains that you believed were of concern? To you yes. And in hope that that would lead to a particular assessment. To provide them information on my behalf. Okay. So this is page three, and then I'm going to show you the second part of that assessment. Do you recognize that as well? As yes. page two? Same thing. There's a designation as to different domains, self-help, social, emotional, and communication. Yeah, the different motorized. developmental areas. I'm sorry. Can we take one at a time, please? It's hard for me to take two oh, pages sorry. down. Thank you. And we've already discussed the information that's relevant on this document, right? In yes. Of... Okay. Permission to publish to the jury order? You may. And would, uh, if you know, would the parent also fill out a similar form like that? Yes, they do. And we don't see one another's. Okay. And based on that, would a psychological evaluation have also been done? If Fiddler's felt it was, what Fiddler's would normally do is um, the parent and the school turn in assessments and then they will observe or meet with the parents at home to see the child's home environment 
and then they come serve the child in the school and then um, they will go to whatever the location is to do a further assessment of the child. So it's like a wraparound evaluation on all components of a child's yes. life. Okay. Did you ever find out the results of that evaluation or the referral to Fiddlers? I know um, Nicholas was, I don't know if the terminology is picked up for speech. He okay. did get speech at, that I recall at least twice a week when he left the school, he went home for speech. Okay. And did he at some point leave Riverglades? I'm sorry. Uh, Young Minds? Young Minds, but I believe it was after I left. Okay. And did you have any other contact with Nicholas after that? I talked to maybe Nicholas, like, I mean, Linda once or twice, and then um, his, when his dad passed away, it wasn't that long ago after I left, so I attended the funeral, and then I one time saw Linda shopping and spoke to her. Have you ever been to her home? Yes. Okay. What, were, what was her home like? I went to their home, but it was for a party of his, and it was mainly outside. I didn't help myself to the inside. Was it a large? But what, a nice home, yes. Large home in Parkland? Large home, yes. Swimming pool? Lots of property. Okay. Didn't look like financially they needed anything, is that correct? No, they were financially fine. Okay. So on the outside, everything looks good? Yep. Okay. Um, I would never question the home life, and I'm not providing any means for the kids. Understand. 100%. So... Did it appear to you that Linda had a support group to help her with Nicholas? In my opinion, not really. Um, the parents at the school, like Nicholas attended half day and we had a, quite a many children that were half day. So a few parents would gather out front of the school and talk. And it wasn't like, to me, Linda was not on their level. They were like looking at Linda for themselves as some other figure. And I'm not, I can't say for sure. Roger was supportive as a husband and a father, but to get the kids help, I think it was more on Linda. Okay. Why is it important when you have a special needs child to have a good support system? for the parent to have a sounding board for themselves, not to feel guilty and to be able to have resources to help their child in any way. And for the child to benefit the most that they can. Ms. Fisher, do you believe that you did everything you could do for Nicholas Cruz? I wanna hope I did. May I have a moment, please? You may. That um, a meeting where Linda appeared to be receptive, acknowledging that her son needed more services, that's when she told you that he was adopted? Yeah. Okay. Did she tell you any, if she had any information about the birth mother? Um, she told me later in time that um, his mother was an addict at birth. And then, um, then when Zachary came along, she was trying to tell me that they were um, brothers, but I kind of didn't believe that. Why not? Because they of the built, and I'm like, I don't know how you know parents of that age got Nicholas, so how they were able to get another child. It just they were definitely different built and not quite like similar. physically. Yeah. So Nicholas was bigger or smaller. Nicholas was smaller, and Nicholas was um, very um, skinny and um, lightweight, I would say. Um, and then Zachary was very broad, and their skin tone wasn't quite the same. Okay, so I'm just showing the jury ex defense exhibit 11 again. And approximately, if you know, what was the age difference between the two boys? I don't remember that. I just remember Zachary. I think Nicholas had been at the school for almost a year when Nick, when Linda Bart picked up Nicholas with Zachary. And did you get to know Zachary? Zachary attended the school too. 
and developmentally, how was he? From what I remember, he was fine. There, we didn't see any delays or anything with him. But I left shortly after he started. But there was no signs of anything. Thank you, Mr. Schroeder. Mr. Queen, do you want to? Yeah.